And so, so you see in the German the system, they talk about when they worked their signals and they kept saying that. That meant when they were working together for a period of time, they didn't have to say much. They had the fingers fixed and the they were all working together very well. It would be hard to throw a basketball in death away if you don't have a guy to catch it. I understand. But, you know, but, but the point is, people have done this. Fighter pilots have done it. And that's a fast paced environment. Oh, I'm going red paced. flags, and there's no way fast. you can do a red flag without an ATO coming up or a frag. I'm playing the devil's advocate a little bit, but, what you? but I'm, I'm saying you've, you've flown red flags, you're an Air Force pilot. No, I haven't flown red flag. That happened after I oh, got well, out. After similar I exercises. Right? I know about red flag. I was out there and I observed it. In fact, I encouraged you to go and get it honored at the higher headquarters. They didn't want to do it. And I went out there and made an investigation. And what they wanted to do, they almost ruined red flag. They may have done it by now. They want to put a goddamn, uh, what do you call those teams in there? The cameras? I don't know where I came in. Uh, anyway, they want to have some guys there put standards on the goddamn red flag. They call those teams and I run out of the airport. I went through the roof. I said, Well, Christ, you're going to ruin the whole thing. Everybody's going to do it a certain one way then. You know, the approved solution is what I'm trying to tell you. So I got them thrown out with the chief. And he said, That's bullshit. He threw them out. They still want They tried to, You don't understand. He said, No, I understand. You don't understand. You're no longer involved in those exercises. I don't want any standards out there. You must not like McCresses then and things like that. Well, I don't know what a McCress is, but I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is what, what, what they recognize, they want these guys to start learning how to deal with different situations instead of having to go through a standard procedure so they can adapt to changing circumstances. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what is a McCress, about, anybody? Well, it's, it's nothing but a test. And, uh, it's like an RTEP. You know what an RTEP is, sir? Same thing as part of You have a, a number of events that you have to do, and you have to meet these standards based on whatever the event is. Uh, but, I mean, when you go to the National uh, Training Center and do the exercise out there, if you don't meet those objectives, that's the thing, right? Well, we don't want to this. Okay, I don't want to take it too far, but I'm trying. I want to emphasize verbal orders. You may have to put some things out because they're of a very critical nature. There, but I don't want to get where any time you communicate with the lower people, it's always through a written order. That's the key point. I'm I don't. I agree with that. So you, you know, you can't take it too far. But the reason why they were saying that they wanted primarily personal contact between the superiors and subordinates, people so they understood them. And so that's why uh, Gadarian put out that thing: verbal orders only. It's not that they did that only; they wanted very high emphasis there because then they could turn their operations over very rapidly. Sir, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I, I've seen with the trying to get the warfare. Incidentally, be, well, hang on just a second. Your point is quite good, though. Let's say you haven't trained these people to work together, then uh, you're going to have to be damn sure they're going to be given very strict orders. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And therefore, it's sort of a self fulfilling prophecy. Now you have to put the verbal orders out. Now you slow yourself down. More often, I mean, not verbal orders, written orders. I'm sorry, I said it the wrong way. That falls back what you said. Yeah, so what I'm saying is the centralization. So if you if you don't train these people and you don't they don't think the same way, they don't have you know similar orientations, then you have no other choice. You have to do what you want. But then of course you have to pay the price. You know, you're going to have a slow slow tempo or slow pace operation. I mean, that's I don't know how else to deal. With. But if you're going to get these people so they can work together as an organic whole, then you can turn turn the operation over and over much rapidly more rapidly. You can adapt to circumstances as they, as they shift and change. You can shift gears and change with it. The only thing I was going to say was that in garrison, there's a garrison mentality and there's a field mentality. Yeah. And we have a tendency, uh, I saw the 2nd Marine Division go through all the gyrations of General Gray was a CG, trying to get a new worker uh, off the ground. And we went out in the field and we tried to do all those kind of things. We go back in garrison and next thing we know we're, we're telling exactly People how to do things. We're going we're not mission type orders. We're, we're doing exactly the same thing over and over again. Then we go out the field. People don't make the transition, so uh, it's very hard. It's very hard to do that in garrison time unless you train yourself that way too. Right. It seems to me there's a. If we were in war and we were constantly out on the battlefield, then I think we would probably gravitate to that and we want to win. But when you go to the field for two weeks, come out of the field, and now you're back where. Uh, I remember an incident where the regimental four called me up and they wanted five men a day or ten men a day to move wall up in the middle of the regimental area. So I called him back up and said, what's the mission of these people? He said, we're going to do all the wall up. So I'll just march my whole company over there and I'll get it done in two hours and you won't screw with me the rest of the week. He said, no, you don't understand. That's not, <laughs> that's not, that's meant to see the they couldn't make the transition. Couldn't make the transition. So now I end up having five people. Well, let me give you an example. When they used to design. Yes, it's one instance. 
So let me tell you what else I did by having verbal orders over the telephone. See, I know how the goddamn bureaucracy worked. What they want to do is go through all the chains and that, and everybody start modifying it along the way. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of going down direct when I was designing airplanes. Remember, I'm dealing with contractors. I'm dealing with other agencies in the Air Force. Of course, I had to talk to the Congress and everything else when I'm laying that damn thing out. Because, you know, every once in a while I like to hear whether they're making any progress. And so I did the whole fucking thing. I just got tired of the bullshit and started doing it and it worked. And Christ, these other guys started on programs way ahead of me, and I was done before they even would hit them. And I had this design laid out. In fact, when I was calling the guy on the phone, we had a big meeting. I remember one day it was a two hour goddamn meeting. And the generals, all the staff people, I'm making notes and all that, you know. And we finally came up to they agreed something good to be done. We had to do new. And I said, You really want to do that? I said, I, I finally sold him. He said, Yeah. Is how soon is it going to take you to get that implemented? They thought I was going to send out some long message. I said, Well, I said, as soon as I leave the meeting here, uh, I said, I'm going to be in the telephone, and when I'm off the telephone, it's on its way. The guy said, I don't believe that. I said, well, you, you sit and listen. So I got in the phone, I said, okay, get your pad out. And I went down to the thing, I said, okay, here's the way you set your programs up, and laying the whole thing out, and I said, now play it back to me. What did I just say? He told me, it's fine, good, get back to me in a week, what the hell are you doing? I said, that's the way. He's like, I can't believe it. We'll see. If mom's out, you can crucify me. It's not your mom, I trust you. Better. We had done enough. I'll check with them. You know, I'll check with them in a couple days. How's it going? Do you have any, any problems show up? Yeah, a couple things. You know what to do? Fine. They tell me, yeah, it sounds good fresh. Good and something they thought was going to take months. Hell, we had it done in a couple weeks. Said, there it is. Done. On your desk. Good boy. Where'd you get these ideas? I wouldn't always have. Did it when I was at Dallas. We ran the fighter weapons for the same thing. I said, you know, this stuff of goddamn writing all this paperwork, pretty soon you're buried in shit. Not only that, you're worried about whether you say something just so. If I talk to the guy over the phone, we can play it. We're getting instant feedback. Remember, when message only has one thing that goes out, there's no feedback. This way, I'm talking to him. He tell, I go, oh, he didn't quite get in there. Block. Done. Press. Next guy. That's exactly what Wood was doing with his. Combat command. He was doing the same goddamn thing. Get down there and talk it out. Fine. We had to both understand. Fine. See you, Tiger. I got somewhere else to go. He had a division spread out in a 500 mile front. He was kicking ass and taking names. He was, had a tempo and pace point, just like that. He's not the only one. Other people thought he was very good. Walt did it. Some of the German command. Of course, that part of the war, they weren't doing it too well. Wood was doing it very well. And he was Patton's best guy. In fact, he's the one who told Patton to go to hell. Pat went to loop back to the channel port. She said, "Hey, that's not, we don't want to face. He said, we don't want to face England. We're trying to get into Germany. And he violated it. Pat got pissed off. He finally sold it to him. He said, well, you're right, press. Pat wasn't easy. He wasn't an easy guy to go up against that way. He eventually got fired. You know, he got rewarded at Canada. He knew that didn't he? That always happens. So did Pat." <laughs> No, but I'm huh? He was fired. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because they had an operation around Mets, and he was pissed off the way they were doing it. So he wanted to do it his own way, so they can. He didn't want to see the way they had these frontal attacks. This is bullshit. There's a better way of conducting this. He wanted to set it up differently. So he tried to violate their intent. So, out. In spite of the fact that he had the most successful armor commander they ever had. They just said, bullshit, you're out. But he's regarded the army that he holds on a very high level. He was a guy that was, when he was in there for the short time. He only operated about six months, like a very short time. But for the period he was in there, holy Christ, what he did. I regard it. Go ahead. Sir, before we get into the. We're, getting into we're, getting... we're not going to do that tonight. Okay. Unless you want to. That was good. the answer. We're going to do it. Well, you can do it if you want to. It wouldn't take that long. You can do it. I'd love to have a fast flight for us. Oh, I, I didn't mean the night. Uh, I didn't mean to do it tonight. Uh, I mean, Good, take five. Well, this went fast. Uh, uh, I, I, I like the, uh, the opportunities for mis mismatch and matchups at the physical, mental, and moral level. One of the physical, two of the mental, and three of the moral. Can you identify the spring inside? Okay. The way to look at it, you have under this, there's really, you're worried about the situation you're dealing with, right? Or you have to deal with the world about that's the physical. You have to take no image, that's part of the physical. It's also going to be moral, mental, and physical situation. You also have the actions you have to take in order to deal with that situation, right? Then you have to have ideas behind your actions. And then you have to have a moral code or ideals that you're appealing to. In other words, you, your ideas are, 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 are framed with inside your moral code or your ideal. 
and then your actions are framed within both your ideals and your ideas, and of course, then you're using all three of those, to, hopefully, you're, you should be using all three to deal with the uh, situation. And so I'm saying, in a sense, you can get six mismatches, one between your actions and your situations, two between your ideas, one be your, between your ideas and actions is one, between your ideas and situations, two. So you get two from your ideas on that. And then you take the other one, your ideas are related to mental, and your ideals are related to moral. So then you can get a mismatch between your ideals and your ideas, between your ideals and your ideas, excuse me, between your ideals and your ideas, your ideals and your actions, your ideals and your situation. So that's three. Likewise matchup, just take the opposite. M and M's both three ways. So you got so you got six you got six possibilities there. One within your uh, physical, two within your mental, and three within your moral. Does everybody see that now? Normally I write it out. I'm gonna make a chart on that. I didn't have any paper and I would have handed it out and had to do they to fight yourself so you could see it. But the name of the game is you're trying to what you're trying to do is generate mismatches in your adversary system, and the mismatches signify that he's not coping with the world. And you can do it through those three dimensions, the moral, mental, and physical. Maintain the matches in Europe. Huh? Maintain the matches in Europe. And you want to maintain as many matchups as you can. In other words, you want to get more matchups than he's got, therefore he's got more mismatches, therefore you're leveraging him, he's not leveraging you. And that's the name of the game. It's, it's, it's like not a perfect see, it's not a perfect world, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not it's relative. Yeah. Is your Here, let me write it up. Give me a yellow pad, I'll write it up for you. I'll wait to see it. You just got to work on mental connectivity of your tendency. That's where you really got to concentrate. You have to have a harmonious effort. You want to push on? You, you generally work on the physical fiber. Well, you know, Maybe we can do it tonight if you want. Think about it. After you get seven, we'll see. I'm gonna run off the tape too. Put the demand on the brain out. Well, okay. Now let's re-examine these. They begin to make the emperor's naked. Why is he naked? He's got no matchup with the world that's going on out there. In other words, his ministers are walling him off from what's going on. They're feeding him bullshit. You know. You heard the old statement we used to say in the military. You know? Keep in the dark and feed them both. Treat them like a mushroom. Keep in the dark and feed them both. This man. This is a match. Look at John. He's straight physical. Properly directing. What you mean is very important book. I'm quoting directly. Great art and a properly directing lines of communicate operations to establish and reference the base of the match of the enemy. It's a seed made in the enemy. Without and is the most important, most difficult problem. In other words, you want to what, cut them off physically from the world is the same for the Still not a physical thing. And look at leadership. The art of inspiring people, enthusiastic action for the achievement of uncommon goals. If you don't interact with them, how the hell can you inspire them? You can't. And the key thing is uncommon goals. You know, the common goal, everybody agrees on goal. You don't need leadership, all you need is a man. You said goal that otherwise, otherwise wouldn't go for extraordinary and common goal, then it takes a leader. And once again, you come with interaction. And if you don't set a very good example, well, you're going to have a hard time doing that. What okay. are we going to do with organic design? Who, who, who is the sponsor of organic design? John, do you see that? You're going to come? Okay. When do you want to set that up? When you set it up, there's no problem. Like, what would work out best with your people? What you got from that thing? Yes. The standard of living is going up with good moral fiber. We got some very serious problems in the world. Yet at the same time, we got people that are making these that that, that, that we have in the leadership position, whether it's the Congress, whether it's the executive branch, or even the military, or other. Or other, or other branches, all they're interested in, Christ, they want to get high salaries and everybody take care of them. And not only that, the, 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 the common person out here in the world feels like he's getting crapped on. And these people want more for themselves and less for the other. They see a big divergence. See, outside the Beltway, it's very different. I see it down in Florida. Boy, they're really horned off, like that 51% pay rate. A good example of 51% pay rate. They came totally unglued, totally unglued. And if you recall, 
David Broder and all these assholes in a poster saying, well, hell, a goddamn guys deserve it. That was an inside the beltway thing. They didn't even look outside. In the meantime, these people are saying, why should we give them a 51% pay raise? What have they done for us recently? They want a big raise in pay. In the meantime, the country's going down to it. In other words, the worse we get, the more we uh, give to the uh, leadership. And, of course, their view is, well, if they show us some results, they start cutting the foreign debt and start doing some of these other things, then we might give them a pay raise. Maybe we ought to take 51% away from them because they haven't been delivering the goods. And then the other argument that came out, they said, if their goddamn pay so low, how come they fight to retain their seat? It can't be too bad because they're fighting like hell to retain the 99% of them. You know, went back for re-election, so it can't be too bad. Didn't bad. You know, so if it's, if it's such a bad deal, and not only that, the thing that really frosts them is the way they installed it. They had it set up such that they didn't even have to vote, which was a huge deception camp, and they said they didn't even have enough guts to step up for it. So they became very greedy. They wanted to get a 51% pay raise all in one fell swoop. Now, if they would have done it, maybe 10 or 15 percent, my, my feeling is they probably would have got away with it. You know, because they, people say, well, yeah, okay, we don't like it, but they just get even. So they got greedy and they lost the whole nine yards. Now, to even get 15 percent, everybody's watching them. I mean, everybody's out there alerted now. They're going to watch these assholes. And they told me, I know guys down there, they got, they got people, you know, they're just observing like hell. And so Congress is afraid to go forward with it right now. Very nervous. And they did it themselves. And then this right stuff, you know, hasn't gone down good. You know? kind of things that he games he's playing and now we see in the Ollie North trial was the thing that you know they tried to make it they tried to make it look like under the Tower Commission that the president and uh, Bush I and mean, uh, Reagan and Bush were hardly involved now we find out these these documents are coming out they definitely were involved and now the Senate and Congress is all horned off at that and, and, and in a sense North is a fall guy now you know and we'll never know the real truth I don't think but my suspicion is uh, uh, you know, knowing the bureaucracy, I operated up in that environment, and I operated pretty fast and loose because I was designing airplanes. You have to do that kind of stuff. You know, you can get away with playing a pretty uh, without no, having people know things, maybe for a few months. But North was doing it for two years. There's no way that that White House didn't know what he was doing, and that they hadn't sanctioned it from the top down. They sanctioned it, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's blame. You know, there's as much blame as he is. Now, the thing that he did bad, what I think is bad, some people seem to justify. It. I don't think you should lie to the Congress. What they should say is, I can't answer that question. I, can't, I cannot answer it. I've been ordered not to. If you want to get an answer, you go talk to the president or the vice president or my boss. I can't answer it. That's all they have to say. That's where he did. The thing he made, where he made his mistake, he didn't do that alone. He was directed. Or I think he made his mistake was he shouldn't have pumped out that phony information to Congress. He just, I would, people, they tried to get me to do some of that stuff one time. I'm telling you. I told the guys, I want that in a written order. I'm going to put it out. They want to do some phony stuff. In fact, I was before a general because I didn't want to do it. It was the Secretary of the Air Force, his executive officer, general. And he had another guy in there as a witness. He chewed my ass out. He said, you understand what I want, boy? I said, I've understood it from the beginning. He said, here it is. I said, fine. I said, to be sure that everybody else understands that this order was issued by this office, to make goddamn sure I want it in writing. I said, now, General, you listen to me. I'm going to take that goddamn order, and I'm going to put my little note on it, and I'm going to spread it throughout the whole goddamn AFC command, so it'll never get lost. There are always going to be copies, and then when the thing bombs up, you're going to eat it. I said, I'm ready for your written order. He said, sit, let's sit down and talk. He got very interested. I knew fucking A, he wasn't going to sign that order. Because <laughs> he's trying to tell me that if I didn't go obey that order, possible court martial. There's no way he could explain that before a court martial. I knew it. I said, why would he put that in writing? Because when they see the order. He said, well, he said, I think we're going to have to do it differently. I, said, I think so, sir. Then he asked me my recommendation. I said, well, here's a way it'll work. And goddamn, not only that, it'll be legitimate. We won't look like a bunch of assholes at the end of it. He said, well, can I take that? And I laid something out. And I said, you might want to modify it. As long as it's in that theme, if you try to do it another way, I said, I'm not on board unless it's right. And then I will put my little amendment to that damn thing and be sure everybody, every level has a copy. So when this thing bombs out, we know who's responsible. See, you have that out. People are afraid to take it. They intimidate. See, he had a witness there, and so that witness was on my side then, too, because they know what I'm doing. See, that witness can go either way. <laughs> that's one time when you need uh, written order. Hmm? That's, that's when you need written order. But that's based upon what? Mistrust. mistrust. Exactly. That's why I needed a written order, because it was based upon mistrust. I didn't trust the son of a bitch. Wednesday at 1500. What day do you want to do it? Today's Tuesday. Tomorrow. Time flies now. Good time. Wednesday at 1500. You want to do it here tomorrow at 1500?
Thank you. End of session.